Hi there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on our Space Wolves color scheme and the model that we've chosen for this guy here is going to be our Primaris Sergeant and our Intercessor Sergeant there and um, I wanted that you know bare head so I can get that big fiery red hair uh, kind of showing off. Great color contrast for the model. Um, we're going to be going with kind of the yellows and rich reds and all that so huge high contrast uh, look and feel to this model here. I love the paint scheme and uh, yeah really looking forward to it. It. So without further ado, let's get him primed up in Korax White and we'll be right back. All right, so we got our Sergeant all primed up in Korax White here and uh, we're just going to start with a very simple base coat of rust gray over the armor. Uh, we're going to dodge as much as we can any of the metallic bits. Uh, we don't want to put too much paint on there, uh, but I am going to work my way over all the armor. So I have got a fresh pot of paint here so I'm adding just a little bit of water on the palette off to the side and I'm just going to go in and make sure uh, that I get a nice uh, clean coat on here now obviously uh, you can uh, thin your paints down and make a couple runs at the coating here but uh, you just really need to kind of dip it in the water um, I'll load up my brush and then I'll dip it in the water and then I'll kind of start with uh, with that so I'll work my way around I'm going to avoid as much of the functional bits uh, and just kind of do the main plates uh, of all the armor. Uh, optionally, you can leave that, um, that uh, our left, his right uh, knee pad, um, you can leave that uh, off as well because we'll be applying some color to that on its own. On the backpack, uh, I'm going to leave this little circle cover over the reactor. Uh, I'm just going to leave that on its own uh, without getting any paint on it. And again, the same thing with this kind of grating up at the top here as well. And because this guy is a sergeant, I'm going to do the helmet uh, in uh, the lighter gray, the Fenrisian gray. So again, I won't uh, cover that helmet up at all either. We've got our guy all kind of finished up here in rust gray. And I have to say, his baby blue PJs look really cute on him. Uh, it's quite bright, uh, the color without any kind of wash or anything, kind of black lining it or metallics darkening it down. So the white and the blue look awesome. He looks like he belongs in the sky. It's very sweet. Okay, um, so uh, next up we're going to be working on our silvery metallics. And this is going to be basically anything functional. Uh, we're going to use lead belcher here. And we're just going to go after, like I said, anything uh, functional, the uh, bolt rifle, the um, just kind of the accordion type uh, joints, things like that. So uh, I can start off with this in here. It's a little bit of a blob. And uh, I'm just going to go in here and do the accordion joints. Okay, I'll also do the belt buckle. And the joints under the arm here. All right, on the back, we've got the handle of the bolt pistol. And we've got these little bit uh, of this kind of ducting for the cabling back here. On the helmet, we've got this piping that leads up and around to the sides. All right, on the bolt rifle, we're going to do the uh, magazine down here at the bottom the handle here, and all these little extra finishes that stick out, the grip. And then we got all these pieces up at the front, kind of just sticking out there. Okay, so at the top, we've got this little bit of kind of ribbing at the top. We'll go over that. We've got this kind of rotating drum on the inside. And then we've got this all the way going up to the scope as well. And all the little bits and bobs on the scope, we'll tag those. The back of the bolt rifle here. So basically any of the metallic kind of functional pieces on the bolt rifle. Uh, I'm going to leave the little, uh, the little uh, kind of imperial uh, iconography there. I'm just going to leave that uh, until I get back with the gold there. With the backpack, I'm going to do these exhaust vents down at the bottom. There's also this little bit of a kind of a lead connecty type thing in here. 
I'll make sure I get those on the side. And then I'll also work my way around the reactor cover here. Just going around that outer piece. Uh, I'll leave the inside bit because I'm going to come back with a, kind of a lighter color for that. Now at the top of the backpack we've got this venting here. So I'm just going to go over top of that venting with our lead belcher. Make sure I get into those little nooks and crannies there. And get these little kind of pips that are up top as well. And get that whole casing all the way to the front. Alright and then moving over to a finer detail brush. I'm going to catch all the leads at the back of his head in lead belcher. Okay, and I'm going to carry that all the way around. There's a seal that goes all the way around his face. Now, if you go over, um, the reason that we're doing this before is because I can come back in with another color. So if you get a bit on the face, don't stress out. Uh, it's just going to be a lot easier to do it this way. Uh, and then come back and paint over top then trying to do in this kind of finer detail after the fact So just make sure I get that bottom seal and kind of those leads in that rigging at the back of the head And then finally, I'm going to pick out all of these little leads uh, That are kind of in the armor here these little input jacks basically you'll see there's a little one here Okay. So I'm just going to go pick out those little bits of uh, detail in there and then I'll do basically a dummy check. You'll see that I missed a spot here and the other side of this and the front of this. So I'll just work my way around the model and make sure I catch all the metallic bits. For example, one of the things I missed was the vent, the exhaust vent back here. So anything under that casing, uh, I'll do in the lead belcher as well. So I will continue to go find stuff that I've missed and um, I'll finish off all the little bits and bobs that I've missed and uh, yeah, we'll come back see how it looks. Okay, we can see now that the uh, model is starting to darken up a little bit, especially from the uh, the back here. Uh, that lead belcher really does kind of tone it down significantly. Our main kind of leather color and all that's going to be black. So, and, uh, and you know, kind of the casing for the bolter rifle as well will also be black. Um, speaking of going dark, uh, we're going to go with our Hashut Copper for our... Um, just kind of like the, the fetishes and the iconography and all of that. Now, if you've got the regular uh, Space Wolf armor uh, and you've got some of the upgrade packs and all that, each of your kind of sets of icons and all that will be, you know, fairly large. The Wolf's Head uh, kind of iconography is quite large. Um, so I would still base it with this Hashut Copper. Uh, and then after the wash, you can top it up with our next color, which is going to be Fulgurite Copper. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to work my way through, make sure I do a couple thin coats here. I find that these, uh, the dark kind of goldy metallics, they tend to, um, they tend to get really thick. So I just take my time uh, putting these on. You want to make sure you get all the little things like the little decorative skulls, because G-Dub loves them, the skulls, for sure. Uh, you'll want the Aquila on the chest there, uh, any of the iconography on the large pads, if you want to kind of uh, use that big wolf's head there. Uh, I don't have one on this guy. I'm going to use the, uh, the decals, which is the uh, Canadian word for decal um, or transfer. Uh, I'm going to use those on the pauldrons there. Uh, that came in the Primaris, uh, kind of the starter box there, the, the, the intercessors for those guys. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way around, grab all the detail. There's not a ton on this particular sergeant model, uh, but I'll make sure I get two nice thin coats on that. And that should tidy up our gold base color there. So with that nice extra coat of the darkish kind of ready gold that's on there, you can see I still got a little gap in paint. I can, I'm do, going to do a tidy up phase after, but... Um, you can see that it's got lots of character and it's this nice deep rich gold and again if you got the you know kind of the upgrade packs uh, definitely you'll be able to see more and more of that deep red gold it's going to be great uh, we're going to be going with the yellow and the red for the pauldrons and the uh, yellow for the knee pad as well so it's really going to bring out that gold so I'm actually looking forward to seeing how that looks so um, moving on uh, we've got our Abaddon black and we're going to use that for all of our, um, our all of our leathery bits and the shroud for the bolt rifle which is um, you know kind of a pretty important part there it's it's really going to darken down this kind of what is essentially a bright model so I like that nice kind of contrast uh, between the two so you'll see here that I did that silvery bit first so all I'm going to do is go around that silvery bit and if I screw up I can always come back in with more but you see instead of trying to paint that really fine detail uh, I can actually go in here and just paint around it. And it'll be the same thing with this 
um, with this kind of imperial icon here and I'm just going to work my way around just like that. Now, again, it's always easier to go after the larger surfaces a little bit later. So I'll just bring that in a little bit more stable in my hand here. And I'll just paint around all those metallic uh, metallic details there. So um, I'll get more paint here. Uh, I've got the scope here uh, on either side, which is there. I've got the bottom part of the bolt rifle, which is here, leaving that little uh, metallic -y clip. Uh, and I've got this casing or a cowling over the bolt rifle at the back. So I'll just work my way around and kind of do all of that, leaving all those other metallic bits intact. Uh, and anything that's kind of leathery or has a leather finish, uh, I'm going to go and, looks like a couple thin coats here, I'm going to go and just do all the leathery bits here, uh, all of the packs and all of that. That's really thin. So I'll do all of the, uh, the leathery bits here, the packs, that's a little bit better. Okay, you don't wanna have too much coverage, but you don't wanna have too little, you'll have like 55,000 coats there. And of course, um, I'll do the belt here as well. He's got his little grenade canister, so I'll put that over top. And then the belt, again, working my way around that clip. So with the black all done now, we're going to keep trucking along and um, got you know a couple nice coats of black on there. I wanted to make sure. Now I did cover up a couple of small pips, but I'm just going to go in there and touch that up on the kind of the uh, the final phase before we do the wash. Uh, but for now, I'm going to keep going on with our base colors with our Acadian flesh tone and uh, just going to you know do the, the the skin on the face. And I like this color because it's kind of bronzy it's a little bit kind of weather beaten and all that and I really like just that look as we go so um, because we did that a uh, little bit of a mechanical piece down at the bottom uh, that kind of seal there for it uh, we're just gonna go right in and very carefully as I get a shadow from one of the lights here uh, just very carefully work our way around uh, painting two but not going over uh, that little bit of metallic there Continuing on with the face, we're going to use Wild Rider Red. Um, I guess it's not technically the face, it's the hair. But we're going to give him that bright, kind of fiery red hair. Um, and I think what I like about that, uh, you know, having the whole um, kind of red-haired... Uh, Okay, continuing on with the reds, uh, we're going to use Mephiston Red here, and we're just going to do the uh, one pauldron uh, on his right, our left. And we just want to make sure that we get inside that, um, that, that, that inside of that pauldron there. So uh, if you want to paint and you've got something like this where you want to kind of get into the corners, uh, you can get kind of close and then just push the tip of your brush just into that corner there. And if you're careful about it, it's going to be a lot easier to paint the red into the corner uh, than it would be to have uh, try and paint that pauldron edging over top. And then continuing on with the red, uh, we're going to go after this purity seal down here. So the wax part of the seal, we'll do that in Mephiston Red. Oh, I saw another one on here somewhere. Oh, on the uh, bolt rifle, there we go. So all the purity seal kind of wax seal parts of it, uh, I'll just do in the Mephiston Red as well. And then the last piece for the Mephiston Red, uh, I'm just going to do this one little bit of the helmet up top that comes down. Okay, and I extend that all the way down to, but not including the mask. So I'm going to go around that skull there, that little kind of gold skull, pretty messy right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna carry that one line uh, forward on the helmet there. Now, yeah, I'm going to, I'm doing a pretty sloppy job here, but it's just, uh, I can go and I can push that other color in when we come in with the Fenrisian uh, gray, but I just wanna make sure I get that crest of the helmet there. 
Okay, now following up, we're going to use Everland Sunset, and I like that kind of nice, um, it's it's a brighter color, but it's not super bright yellow. Uh, it's kind of like a deep, kind of mustardy yellow. And I just love, uh, I just love this color. It's got lots of personality, but it's still got lots of depth, so you get lots of contrast. But you still get, uh, you know, it's, it's still a nice kind of semi-muted color, perfect for armor or kind of that dingy situation, uh, you know, whether on the battlefield or what have you. Um, I'm also going to do the reactor casing at the back. Now, the nice thing about Averland is if I've done kind of the, uh, the rust gray and then the lead belcher, I can just go back in over top now. And just because it's a base paint, it just goes right over any overlap of the uh, the rust gray or the lead belcher. So look how clean that is. It's perfect. Okay. Uh, and next up, we're going to do, uh, finally, the shoulder pauldron here. Uh, exactly like we did the red. Uh, just kind of pushing into the corners. Just like that. And just kind of get close and then you just kind of push it into the corners using the edge of the pauldron as a guide. And it's way easier to paint it this way than it is to uh, try and paint those pauldron edges on. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, it's starting to come together now, which is great. Okay, now for the helmet, uh, I'm going to ton uh, just kind of touch it up, finish it off, if you will, with Fenrisian Grey. And um, I was thinking maybe white uh, for the bulk of the helmet. Um, but I don't know, it, it, like most of the research that I saw... Um, the closest thing that you got to was basically the kind of the Horace Heresy, Horace Heresy side of things, and they really kind of left the helmets uh, blue. So I am going to paint everything on this helmet, um, obviously leaving the um, you know the metallic side piece there, and I'm going to leave uh, the front mask of the helmet white. I do like that little bit of extra character that you get uh, out of doing that. But the rest of the helmet, as opposed, um, other than the stripe, so obviously if you don't have any kind of command guys, you wouldn't have that uh, stripe there. But I'm going to do it in a Fenrisian gray, so it's still all in the same tonal range. That'll be our highlights later. But I want to have just a little bit of extra, I don't know, difference or personality to the helmets, because I think it really draws your eye in uh, when you're looking at the models themselves. Now, finally, for the seals, I'm going to use Screaming Skull, and that should take us kind of right to the end here before we do the big uh, the big wash. So I'm just going to have the, the Purity Seals just enough up in Screaming Skull just to get that kind of cool uh, parchment look and feel here. And I'll get the other one here on the, uh, the bolt rifle. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do just before I wash them is I'm going to go over top. I'm going to finish off the base because I like to wash that at the same time. Uh, I'm going to find any spots that I missed where I need a little bit more silver or black or whatever. But I'm basically going to do a once over before I wash them. I'll also grab some probably some white and um, uh, some skull white and I'll just go in here and uh, just kind of tidy this up with a thin coat. Just get rid of this little bit of red. But I'm going to make sure that all my lines are tidy and that I've got the coats that I want. I might touch this up a little bit in here. But just going to do a final dummy pass now if I was painting uh, 10 of these guys in a squad in a big batch I would get them all to the point where all the base coating uh, was essentially done and then I just kind of do that dummy pass or that dummy check through uh, through all of them uh, and then I'll be back and we'll give them a good wash all right so we're getting to my favorite part of this whole process and that is going to be the wash now uh, the reason I really like the wash process is, is it basically takes um, you know a paint by numbers kind of uh, uh, you know, take on the model here, and then we add all kinds of depth and character and, you know, all kinds of visual interest to the model. So um, just before I did this, I did a big kind of dummy check to make sure that I caught um, all the little bits and pieces. Usually I'll turn something upside down, and for example, I caught something under the arm here, and you try and catch all those little spaces that were left, uh, you know, kind of white by the primer and all that. Anyway, um, I also painted up the, the base because I wanted to, you know, wash that at the same time. And uh, off we go. So uh, this here is my custom wash. You'll see I use it for pretty much everything. And it's um, it's a mix of 25% Nuln Oil, 25% uh, Agrax Earthshade, and 50% everyday run-of-the-mill uh, floor wax or floor polish. And what it does is the, uh, the floor wax gives it this massive, uh, it flows so well. So for example, if I hit his face here, 
like that, and I give it a half second, you'll see that it slowly drains all out. And, um, oh man, does it ever instantly add character to your uh, to your model, to your paint scheme. So, uh, I'm going to work my way through. Now, if you see stuff pooling up uh, and you're not happy with the pooling after it sits for like a half a second, um, then you can always go back in and just use your brush to kind of sop it up. Uh, where you're going to get particular attention to detail is in the uh, the front part of the helmet, the mask. So what you can do is you can vary by trying different directions and all that. You can vary exactly how much goes into those uh, crevices there. So um, I'm going to keep going with this. Again, just make sure you don't get too much in the way of uh, pooling. And uh, yeah, I'm going to let it sit for about 45 minutes and we'll see how he comes out after that. So we can see now after that wash uh, that it's really brought out, oh man, like a ton of detail and it was pretty much negative work. I mean, this is this is such um, an easy way to add uh, just an incredible amount of detail to your model, really bringing out all those kind of 3D uh, depths, the nooks, the crannies, the edges, all of that. And um, yeah, just instant uh, instant performance. So uh, really happy with the way that one has turned out. Now it is a little uh, kind of muddy and uh, and messed up right now. Uh, not messed up, but the colors are kind of muddied together and all that. And we're not really getting that uh, vibrancy and contrast that we're looking for. So we're moving on to the second kind of piece now, and that's going to be to take um, you know some of our uh, base colors and just kind of reapply them. Only uh, we want to leave where all those kind of nooks and crannies and depths. Uh, were we want to leave those uh, intact so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let's start with the back of the leg that's probably a good starting point um, I'm going to go in and now you'll see that it's really brought out all the little details and uh, you know the little bits and pieces there so I'm going to do something called an overbrush so it works a bit like the dry brush where you're kind of picking up the main highlights uh, but what you're doing is is you're leaving all those little um, you know that little bits of shading in there you're leaving those recessed shading uh, pieces still intact and um, it actually goes surprisingly fast because you just kind of the colors already there so you're just kind of going in and just kind of touching up the uh, just that, that base color a little bit there now if you mess up a little bit that's fine we're going to come back um, and kind of black line at the end but you can see instantly how it brings out all of that uh, detail even further. You've got almost three shades of color. You've got the base uh, which has been shaded and then you've got kind of this upper piece and then we'll highlight it on top of it. And um, just going to go around the model now you see all these little uh, kind of in uh, indents, not indents, just these little uh, kind of pieces that come up and in like that, the little notches in the armor there. And uh, I'm just going to go kind of around those and you can see very quickly that it brings back a lot of that color and vibrancy. So um, take your time, work your way through, and we'll come back and see uh, how it looks. Uh, on, on the rounded side here, so maybe before I uh, tune out there, uh, on the rounded ones, I'm just going to go over top like this. Uh, so we're just going to make sure we just don't get into those uh, little cracks and crevices and all of that. All right, so we've got lots of the character and kind of the, the basic color back onto our armor here, which is really, really nice. Um, and it's starting to make the other areas look a little bit more muddy. But again, that's uh, that's fine with us uh, as we're progressing along. Now, I'm going to use Fenrisian Gray. Uh, I used it for two things. Um, first, I used it for the helmet base color. Uh, so we'll start off with that first. All right. Um, and I'm just going to go in here and just apply that base color uh, to the helmet just like this. Right, and I'll be careful not to get onto that red kind of crest up there, but I can go right up to the edge and that allows me to just kind of, you know, redefine that color as I go. Okay, and then that little kind of bit of the back of the helmet there. All right, now after I've got that all redefined there on both sides, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is now start with the edge highlight uh, on the armor. And uh, oh man, the uh, the intercessor armor is such, uh, it is pretty much built, like designed uh, for edge highlighting. So if I turn this upside down, you'll see here on the very edges here, uh, it's a breeze just to go in and highlight uh, those edges there. 
Um, so like all those little pads on the knees and all that, uh, super easy to do. Now, if you do get a little sloppy, um, for example, if you go and you're not the, you know, the straightest of hands or whatever, and you kind of go a little messy like this uh, on the leg, you can actually go in and come back with um, your your rust gray and you can paint it back down um, and that's uh, I call that subtractive edge highlighting and I've actually got a whole video on that um, if you want to check it out on the channel but uh, for this one here I'm just gonna kind of work my way around and do all the edge uh, highlights here now uh, there are some rounded parts of the armor obviously you can see them up here um, so what I would do for the say these little uh, bits at the, pa at, the, uh, at the back on the pack here is I do my edge highlight around you know it's a little sloppy then I get most of the paint off my brush and I would just kind of touch over the top like this um, just so that it's a little bit of a blend it just picks up a little bit of that highlight or a little bit of the light up there and then if I am unhappy with it in any way at all, and it'll dry actually pretty nicely, uh, but I can go back in with the rust gray there and kind of touch it up. All right, so I'm going to pick out all of the edges here as I go in a somewhat random fashion here. Uh, but I'll do the edge highlighting across uh, all of the armor, and then I'll finish up the other side of the, uh, the helmet here at the top. Okay, so you can see I've kind of worked my way around um, and uh, I tend to get a little bit sloppy, but um, I was going to touch it up off camera, but I figured I might as well just show you guys. Uh, you can see there's spots here where it's very difficult to get those really fine uh, kind of tight edges. So what I'm going to do now is go back with my base color here, the rust gray, and um, just to kind of restore just a little bit of color in the... Um, kind of larger portions of larger plates. So uh, the example I intentionally did here was this one. So all you're going to do is paint it the rust gray uh, and you're going to paint basically away uh, the pieces in the center that didn't exactly work out so great. Um, another uh, problem spot that often happens is these, um, these kind of elbow pieces here. Very difficult to kind of get that nice defining line. So I'm going to take my rust gray and go in here. Now, uh, rust gray wet is about the same color as the Fenrisian gray dry. Uh, so it, uh, it, you know, it definitely kind of takes away that, uh, <laughs> that visual while we're painting. But you can see here, if I've got it uh, a little bit on the sloppy side, I can just go in and I can just kind of tighten it up uh, from either side, just like this. Okay, and that gives us a much finer uh, detail that's in there. So I just want to show that to you guys, uh, and it's uh, you know it's it's just a nice, easy way to get your lines uh, you know kind of cleaner, and uh, it's a little more unified at the end as opposed to looking like uh, you did a messy edge highlight. So it's definitely a cheat, but uh, if no one knows in the end, you just say edge highlighted it, which is true, <laughs> and then you go from there. All right, I'll continue along with this, and uh, we'll catch you on the other side. All right, next up we're going to work on our reds. Uh, and again, we're going to go back in with our Mephiston red here and uh, just kind of add, uh, again, that overbrush uh, type of character uh, to our armor up here. And uh, I'm just going to start at the top and just kind of streak my way down. Uh, and again, just keep working on keeping that, uh, that depth and darkness and that kind of gradiated shading in there. So we're just highlighting back to its main color and I'm just going to just keep streaking that down until I get that nice kind of gradation that I like. With the helmet, I'll apply the same kind of idea. So I'm just going to go over that main highlight, that overbrush there, leaving that detail that's in there. Okay, and on the front of the helmet here as well. And then finally, I'll do the uh, little purity seals, just kind of hitting the outside edge, just restoring a little bit of that color, again, while leaving the depth. Nice, and you get that nice kind of three-dimensional look and feel to it. Highlighting the red now, we're going to go with Wild Rider Red. Uh, this is going to do a couple things. Uh, we're going to highlight the, um, uh, the red shoulder pad there. And again, because it's rounded, uh, I'm just going to do that streaky down kind of motion again. Only I'm going to do it, uh, hopefully with not as much paint on my brush here. Um, I'm just going to do this and just kind of streak down again. Uh, only going about a third of the way down. Uh, just to kind of blend those colors uh, together there. 
So I get that nice kind of gradation that goes on there. Uh, I'll do just around the outside edge of our purity seals, which is super quick and easy. And then I'll work back on the helmet, grabbing a bit more paint here. Okay, I'll get back to the helmet here. And um, it's a bit of a tricky one, actually. There's a rounded surface that's kind of here at the front. So I'll just kind of touch that color into that rounded surface there. But on the crown of the helmet, I'm going to go in and just edge highlight. Now, again, if I'm unhappy with the net result at the end, I can always come back with that uh, Mephiston Red and really tidy it up. This one isn't so bad right now. And then finally for the hair, um, because there's not actually any uh, texture on this model here, uh, I'm going to get a, quite a bit of, you know, a nice fine tip on my brush and there's not a lot of paint. So I'm just going to kind of sneak in that texture by doing uh, striations, which is a bunch of vertical lines and just kind of bring that hair up a little bit. Now, when that is uh, done, if I want a little bit more depth, what I might do is take some of my wash. Let me just grab that right now. What I might do is take some of my wash. Again, that's that 50% uh, that floor wax, 25% null, null oil, 25% uh, agrax. And I might just go paint in some texture on that hair, uh, getting just a little bit on the brush and then just kind of streaking that uh, like this, just to give it a little bit of, of, of texture. All right, so I will see how that looks in the end uh, and I might uh, do a combination of a little bit of texture and a little bit of the red coming back in there. Now pretty much the one color that I'm not going to apply any highlight to is going to be this Everland uh, Sunset. And the reason that I'm doing it that way is because, well, I just really like the kind of the, the heavy kind of mustardy uh, yellow. I think it's just got a lot of character on its own and I don't think it really necessarily needs a highlight. So on this, again, I'm just going to work my way out from the kind of the uh, center uh, just to the edge a little bit here. Okay, and then on the actual pauldron itself, making sure I don't grab one, there's uh, no wet paint, uh, I'm going to do the same as well. So I'm going to streak down just as I did with that Mephiston Red on the other side. However, uh, we won't be doing a highlight, so I'm just going to make sure that this is nice and streaky and kind of gets into the nooks and crannies, but still leaves all that, uh, that, that depth in there, that shade. So as I was trucking along the model, just kind of doing my kind of final dummy check, uh, number one, I get so excited about the main colors here that I uh, forgot to mention that I also did the uh, uh, the Everland Sunset on the back uh, reactor cover there as well. Same kind of idea as the shoulder um, the shoulder pauldron plate there. Uh, and I did the two coats on there just to give me a nice kind of even finish, which was, uh, which was pretty cool. Okay, now as I was trucking around, I noticed that the, the helmet for the sergeant here, uh, it just looks like an overly highlighted version of the rest of the armor. And I did want it to stand out. I wanted it to have a white front plate here, uh, but I did want the helmet to stand out as something uh, significantly brighter. So I'm going to go one step up brighter there and use administratum gray. And I'm just going to do just the tiniest of highlights. Now this is optional, of course, but um, I'm just going to do the tiniest of highlights here on the outside of that uh, helmet. And I'm just going to go in that kind of rounded area up there uh, just to give it a little bit more uh, brightness there, just like that. Um, and on the on top of the those kind of little pips and pipes and plugs and stuff on the sides, uh, I'm just going to hit that just on the very edge as well, uh, and that'll just give me just a little pop of extra color. Very much the same tonal range, uh, but it has the helmet stand out a little bit differently. And if I'm painting the rest of my intercessors or power armor guys, and I paint them with the basic Space Wolf uh, colors that I've got in here, the rust gray and then the um, uh, Fenrisian gray on top, uh, then uh, he'll stand out a little bit, which would be kind of cool. And it makes that red pop uh, just a little bit more as well. Okay, so we're going to start moving on to the uh, highlights for the metallics now. And uh, I'm going to start with the silver and I'm going to use Runefang Steel. And I uh, just got to give this a good shake here. Uh, it tends to settle out my, uh, my Runefang anyway. But uh, all I'm going to do with this guy is uh, pretty simple. 
I'm just going to go in here now and um, just do like an overbrush of all the major highlights here. So any of the edges, uh, like the uh, the magazine that's there, uh, just a quick overbrush over here, and literally just like just kind of just literally overbrushing some of these colors, uh, picking out the high spots. Uh, it doesn't have to be overly detailed because we've got lots of that initial color in there. We're just adding a little bit of extra life and color uh, to uh, to the silvery parts here. You see this one got a little washed, a little deep, so I'll hit him with a little bit of the silver there and on top. Now, um, that looks great for that. Uh, you can obviously go around and pick out some of the other details like the belt buckle here. Um, what else we got? Oh yeah, of course, all the leads and the little vents out the back. Uh, just give them a little bit of uh, pop. Okay, maybe a little bit around the reactor. And there's not very much paint on this, uh, on this brush right now. Uh, but what I will do is maybe load it up a little bit. Give this another shake. So what I'll do is now I've uh, load up a little bit more paint and I'll do just the edges around these exhausts at the back. And then uh, I'll grab the two pips up top and then just do a very, very careful edge highlight around that vent right there just to bring up the light uh, on that just a little tiny bit. Now, if you're feeling uh, super keen, um, when you get most of that paint off your brush from doing the other details, you can just kind of go over with just a little bit of a wet brush uh, onto any of these little ribbed pieces here. And you just want to pick out kind of the higher edges. All right, uh, I'll work my way around and see if there's any little spots that I want to do in here but that should cover the silver. Next up for all the goldy kind of uh, bronzy uh, elements or the coppery elements, I'm going to use fulgurite copper and very much like we did with the, um, with the silver, uh, I'm just going to go in and uh, make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. Uh, but what I will do is pick out the main kind of details in here and then I'll just very carefully uh, go over uh, do a little overbrush of all of the iconography there. Now, uh, again, if you've got the big kind of Space Wolf actual packs and you've got the heads, you would just do an, uh, the wolf heads, you just do an edge highlight of this around. But I'm just going to go around and just pick out uh, just those kind of finer uh, details on the gold. And if you get a little bit too overzealous, you can always sneak in with a little bit of thin down wash and tidy that up. All right, so we're kind of drawing to a close on the armor side of things. Uh, but what I like to do now is start working on the bolt rifle and the leather bits. Of course, we've got Eshin Gray. Now, that's going to be our highlight to our black. Uh, there's other ways to kind of make this um, thing happen where you start with Eshin and you just kind of wash it back. But with this, I'm just going to go with the old school, just a straight edge highlight. Now, again, because the uh, Chaos Black, or sorry, Bad and Black used to be Chaos Black, but because it's such a strong base color, you can actually go just a little bit sloppy with your uh, kind of application of your Eshin Gray. And you can use that subtractive highlighting just to come back in a little bit later and just tidy it up. And it might be a little bit easier and just a little bit faster if you're speed painting through a bunch of stuff. But, you know, don't give it a go with your, um, you know, give your edge highlight the best go that you can. Um, but if you screw up, I mean, it's so easy just to come back in with that, uh, with it a bad and black and just uh, tidy everything up. Now with the belt buckle here and the rest of the gear, I'm just gonna highlight kind of the top uh, elements that are there. I'll just touch onto the belt there. He's got his little grenade uh, holder. Or maybe he puts his gum in there, who knows. Uh, I've also got these little pouches in here, which I hope can show up on the camera. Tough to get the angle in there, okay. And then with the holster at the back, again, I'll just do like an edge highlight around, but I can use where the wash is settled as a guide and just bring in a little bit of that extra color back uh, to give it a little bit more kind of vibrancy there. So I'll continue along with the belt and the pouches. And uh, look, see, so you can see little bits and bobs here where I've kind of uh, snuck in with a bit of another color and just tapped into it there. But uh, I'll just go through and I might touch that up with a little bit of a bad and black. Okay, so after having uh, finished up our armor here now, we're going to move on to Arcadian Flesh Tone. And I'm just going to reapply uh, a little bit of color to the face there. Now, uh, I'm going to make sure there's very little paint on here. And I've just got just a little tip of paint on here. 
and I'm going to look very carefully at the way the wash has kind of settled on the, the face itself. So anything that's got a little bit of a highlight to it that the wash has, um, the wash has essentially, uh, you know, kind of moved away from, uh, I'm just going to go after those highlights and it can be a bit, oh man, a bit choppy at first, but we're gonna go for all the, the brows, the cheeks, uh, things like that, the nose and you just kind of keep picking away at it until such time as it's uh, it's come together here. All right, and then I'll finish off with just a little bit of Kislev flesh and just pick out the very, uh, the very uh, highest points of the face, like the brow, uh, the cheekbones, Okay. And the chin, things like that. So um, just going to go and pick those very highest edges there. And uh, I'll let that dry. It comes off pretty bright uh, moving in, but that'll dry down uh, quite nicely there. Now the last piece for the face, uh, I'm just going to take those uh, awesome eyebrows that this model has. I'm going to hit them with a little bit of Wild Rider Red uh, just to match and really kind of show off that bright red, those bright red uh, features, the hair. So I'll just do one eyebrow in the Wild Rider Red and I'll do the other eyebrow in Wild Rider Red. just to give them just that little bit of extra personality. Normally I don't actually do eyebrows. I find the wash and everything seems to work okay and it doesn't really hold your focus, but we're dealing with something that is quite uh, quite light and bright in color. So yeah, no, I think the eyebrows are the, uh, the must do for these guys. For the purity seals, um, the last bit that we kind of have uh, neglected, I guess you could say till now, because uh, we were working on the reds and all that, uh, is our screaming skull. And uh, all we're going to do with the Screaming Skull here is we're just going to kind of pick out the highlights. Uh, we're not going to be doing like an actual highlight color. This will be uh, sufficient for this. Um, so I'm just going to go in here and just pick out the highlights of the, um, of the Purity Seals themselves. And uh, leaving a little bit of that depth in there. And if you have a double seal, it's a little tricky, but you just take your time, go in there. And just kind of touch up that outer edge but you can see with that wash it definitely guides your eye into seeing um, it guides your eye into seeing that there is in fact two uh, purity seal pieces there so completely optional to this now that I would consider the model essentially painted. Uh, one of the optional pieces that I really like to do is to black line. Now, old school GW techniques were to basically take, um, you know, start with a black model, uh, prime black, and then just paint in all the colors, the base colors and all that, but leave these really tiny kind of black outline and edges. And um, I mean, that works. It's a, it's a cool approach for sure. But I really like the idea of coming back in with a black line later because it gives us just one more extra depth of shadow and definition. And uh, for that, I use these Micron uh, 005 pens on, on this guy here. And um, all it is is basically you go around and you find places where uh, two colors meet or two textures meet. And uh, in this case here, if I look at the pauldron, if I just kind of run the, the pen down here, and down the edge, you can see that it gives us a very sharp definition. We've still got that same kind of gradation in there, but it just adds that little bit of extra, you know, just sharpness to it. And you really notice it on the model uh, when you look down uh, from above. And it even withholds, uh, withstands kind of the up close test for sure. So I'll do it in a couple different spots. Anywhere that two colors meet obviously is one, but I'll also do it where two textures meet. So say on the helmet here, uh, where I've got that uh, that crown, that crest, or even here where I've got that little bit of a radio uh, kind of uh, uh, headphone on the side there for the uh, for the helmet. Okay, I'll uh, do that up there as well. So anywhere two colors meet uh, or two textures meet, for example, on the leg here, right? Uh, all these little guys really pick up the pen really well on the inside and man you just tons of color and tons of definition in there. So um, I'll work my way around. Uh, I'm also going to, um, you know, again, wherever the two colors meet, wherever the two textures meet. And I'll also finish off the base here uh, as well and we'll take a uh, look at the final product. All right, he is 
done. He is uh, he needs a deep Scottish accent with a lot of guttural screaming. Um, I just love the look of this uh, model. I love the color. I think it's nice and bright. The yellows and the red stand out. Uh, and you get lots and lots of personality coming through with this guy. Uh, I love the red hair. I think there's just, you know, tons of contrast that happens with this model here. And, I mean, just seeing them out on the table and arming these guys would be just absolutely rad. So, um, really digging the, the, the kind of the net result of it. Super easy to paint, really. It's only a couple of colors. All the same kind of tonal range for the most part with a few, you know, big pops of color. Um, not a lot of extra highlights needed and all that. So, you know, really pleased, uh, really pleased with the way he's, uh, he's worked out. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. This was uh, a blast to paint. Um, if you like this video, uh, please hit that like button. Uh, it really helps get the video out there. It helps all YouTube algorithms, all that other stuff. Uh, if you want more videos like this, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button. There's a little bell right beside it, and then you get notifications on all your devices when a new video comes out. Uh, looking to do some streaming in the next little while, so you'll get notifications of that, which is great. And um, yeah, no, just a, a lot of fun. Uh, as I said earlier, I hope it's of value. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll see more. I'm going to do another video probably in the next little while, and I'm going to be putting all of the uh, transfers on, uh, just kind of, you know, do like the heraldry and all of that, uh, and I'll probably just kind of catch up on a couple of the Primaris guys, uh, making sure that they've got all the heraldry, heraldry all set up, so really looking forward to that. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, again, we'll talk to you soon, and I'll catch you in the next video.